All right, mom and dad, we're talking about the top 10 guidelines that you need to implement today as our kids are going back to school. You know, the reality is, is that there is a perfect storm brewing right now with COVID cases spiking, uncertainty with kids going back to school. Are they at home? Are they in school part time? Are they doing online stuff? When you have people isolating, it, there is a spike of internet usage and online activity. Financial pressures and hardships, people being isolated, it's creating a ripe environment for screen over usage, for porn addiction, and unfortunately, for predators online and people who are looking to connect with our kids who should not be. So the question I have for you is, are you ready for this? Sometimes we're working, we're not overseeing things, we're juggling so much as parents, and I get it. But the truth is, is that the majority of kids who have seen pornography online, as kids, as young kids, average age right now is 8, 9, 10 years old when they first see it. But 70 plus percent of kids stumble across pornography online innocently while they're doing searches and just doing their homework online. And right now, if you take the stats just in Hawaii, in our state, and I don't know if you know what the statistics are like where you are, but listen to this. One in 11 men are searching for sex online. They're doing searches and they're um, predators that are looking for to purchase, looking to purchase sex online. One in 11 men, and, and a large number of those aren't just tourists coming in and out. This is a growing and a rampant problem. Um, and mom and dad, we have to be vigilant. And I want to share with you the top 10 things that I want you to implement as soon as you possibly can so that you can have peace of mind when you go to sleep at night. You can be way more involved in your kids' lives and you can keep them safe online and promote a healthy lifestyle and a way more healthy relationship with technology. I know some of you are already pulling your hair out because kids are just online too much, with video games and social, lots of texting, and we want to help them be as healthy as possible, okay? So here is my must-have top 10 list of what it is that you can do starting today. We've talked about a lot of these, but I wanna re-emphasize these um, because here's number one, and this is a really powerful point. I want you to hear this. Anytime that there is a shift in a season like we're having right now, school is starting back up again, it is an opportunity for us to start new guidelines, to implement new things, to have new discussions, to start conversations, to create things within our family's infrastructure that we haven't had before. Kids are way more open um, and our teens are way more understanding, oh, something new is starting and mom and dad wanna start something new, okay? So that's number one, that's point number one. This is the time to start new things, okay? And I wanna talk about what some of those new things are. But take advantage of this, okay? Have a family meeting, talk with your spouse or talk with friends, or if you're a single parent, get this thing worked out and then start implementing them. <clears throat> now is a good time to do that, okay? So number two, this is a must have. Okay, you've heard me say this over and over again, but if you haven't heard me say it, or if you have and you haven't implemented it, it's time to put on whole home filters in your house. Internet usage is gonna go up even more so um, with schools being online or whatever back and forth, you have to have a whole home filter on your router, something like Open DNS. Um, I've just um, implemented something new. Um, I'm gonna test it and talk to you guys about it later. But even some um, actual, not just the, the the routers, yeah, themselves actually have some filtering on them. Whatever it takes to get it so that when your kids are using your Wi-Fi, everybody in the home, there's fil it's filtering out porn, adult content, violent websites, sites that they shouldn't be going to, gambling sites, whatever, dating sites even, you can, you can pick and choose. If you do not have that in your home, mom and dads, and I'm talking to you all the time, and I know that many of you have heard this, and you still haven't done it, so I want to encourage you today and challenge you, shake you through this, okay? It's time to do it if you haven't done it. All right, number three, parental controls. You have to have control over your kids' devices, tablets, their phones, their laptops, even within the home, okay? I'm still using Circle, and I still recommend strongly Circle. Many of you have fought with it and wrestled with it. Do not give up. If you've already purchased it, go back and reignite it and activate it, okay? There are also, when it comes to parental controls, there's also 
what I call in-phone parental controls as well, okay? So that's on your child's devices, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about, more about that. I have talked about this in other videos, so go back and take a look. But you need to have control. These are time limits. These are which apps can your kids use? How long can they use those apps? Can you pause the internet? Do you have bedtime time limits? Also, a lot of these apps like Circle also include filtering as well, because when your kids are out on their devices, if they're back to school or they're out, they need to have filtering as well if they're doing any searches. <clears throat> so parental controls is number three, must have both in, in phone as well as an app like Circle working on your phone. All right, number four, parental monitoring, okay? I'm still suggesting Bark. Um, again, I'm not getting paid by any of these companies, but I'm still suggesting Bark as the best parental monitoring software um, within the industry, within all the thought leaders in this parental um, guideline sphere when it comes to safe technology they recommend bark this goes through texts emails the Spotify music they're listening to and here's a key videos and images that they're taking on their phones as well okay so are they showing pictures are they being requested of pictures of themselves that are they taking pictures and texting them are they sending them are they receiving them and saving them so you, I didn't know this, but I just recently was talking to Bark on the phone and they were saying that they scan through those as well to see if there's anything that's, um, that they shouldn't be showing on there. Remember, child pornography is illegal for your kids to have. It's illegal for your kids to have images of um, young, um, of kids under the age of 18 if they have sexual images of them on their phone. Um, that is illegal. Um, obviously, it's also dangerous for them. <laughs> Um, but the texts as well that it's scanning is very important because predators um, are, are also connecting with our kids that way as well. Um, or even friends that are getting caught up in trafficking rings are beginning to talk to kids and um, through our texts and group texts, etc. Okay, so you need to have parental monitoring as we go into the school year. Number five, bedtimes and soul times. We've talked about this in another video recently. Do you take the devices away from your kids at night? I want to encourage you, have that conversation and make the guidelines and implement it now. You need to have a certain time when you say, and we call it soul time, which is an hour before your kid's bedtime. So you need to solidify those. We're going into the school year. Say, hey, if it's 10 o'clock or 1030, depending on your kid's age or whatever it is, an hour earlier, I'm going to take all the devices away. We're putting them up, locking them up in mom and dad's room, putting them on airplane mode, whatever. So go over that video. Um, and review that. It's great for their mind, it's great for their sleep, it's great for their studies. You need to have to confiscate their stuff and with bedtimes and soul times. Number six, what I call a screen time exchange, okay? How are we gonna monitor how much screen time our kids are doing outside of school, okay? Entertainment screens, streaming, video games, um, social media, etc. You want to take advantage of this time to set limits and of course do that exchange and we talked about that using coins and doing minutes for minutes where they're staying healthy they're doing workouts they're reading you guys remember what that is maybe you guys remember reading remember with books actual books um so you got to figure that out we've done a video on that so take a look at that number seven no phones during school hours and this is kind of radical no earphones no earbuds during school, okay, and here's why I'm saying that. And I know you and I did that. We we listened to our Walkmans and whatever on the way to school, catching the bus. So I get that. <clears throat> However, we are living in a time where we're trying to connect our kids socially more so anyway. And these earbuds and the stuff, it just isolates our kids so much more. We're already struggling with isolation. Why encourage that even more? So I want you to have a conversation about that. I'm just gonna put it out there as a challenge. But I would just lock out kids from using their phones and you can do that with parental control features that just between school hours, there's no internet usage. Now I know there's a lot of nuances there and so that's why I have my online course. We talk about some of those things, but mainly you don't want your kids between breaks, definitely during class. You want them connecting with other young people the best way you can, of course, socially distance and with masks or whatever, but you don't want them you know, hiding away. And I remember my son, when he started freshman year at school, he said it was so hard to make friends, especially that first two weeks, because kids are just locked into their devices. They don't want to, and maybe don't know how to connect, make new friends. Well, we want to foster an environment where that's not going to be a, a struggle. So um, consider that, okay? That's number seven. Number eight, social media, <clears throat> video game, and apps need time limits, 
okay? Um, so very much connected to this, this, the screen time exchange where there's a max amount of overall time. By the way, uh, for us, you know, I think for the school year, maybe that's like max two hours, something like that. And we have ways that we're, we're monitoring that or we limit that, they use timers, etc. But also within each of these areas, you need to have time limits. And with parental control apps, you can do that. You can go in um, using Circle and say, okay, look, um, on, on Facebook or on Instagram or Snapchat or whatever, my child can only use that for 20 minutes or 30 minutes max per day or whatever it is. And when they reach that max, they're going to come to you asking for more. And again, it's going to spark great conversations, as you know, we talk about a lot. Here, number nine, create Sunday night check-ins and institute book time, okay? Can't get into what all of that means and the book time connects, but again, now is a great time to set into the schedule some kind of screen time check-in with your kids. Maybe you wanna pull up, if you have iPhones, if the kids have iPhones, they have screen time um, summaries at the end of the week. How much texting have they done? How much usage on the screens and streaming, etc.? Maybe you want to st spark conversations around that. Um, maybe you want to go through their Bark um, stuff that you've collected through Bark throughout the week, whatever. That's what I try to do. Sunday night is just a good time to do that. But you ju choose whatever. But I want to encourage you, set a time. It's like a date night. But set a time to say, hey, kids, we're going to talk screen stuff. Maybe you're going to read an article. Maybe you guys watch a video on you know something that's te tech safety or something. Um, do that and, and set that, okay? Number 10. Do an app review. Use this time to say, hey, it's been summertime, things have been loose, and who knows what is on your kids' phones and devices. Pull all the devices in and set up a time this week, maybe tonight, where you pull out each of the devices and you just go through. Hey, what is this app? What's the deal? We, you don't need that. What are, you, are you using this anymore? What's the deal? And just get delete all the stuff that the kids don't need. Ask tough questions. If there's video games and stuff they shouldn't be watching, and using get get these things out okay get into your parental controls and lock them the heck out of being able to download apps on their own okay we talk about this in another video if you're not implementing that mom and dad you have to implement that today and you can do it by doing a Google search on how to do that okay all right those are my top 10 tips I have one bonus for you number 11 if this is freaking you out or overwhelming for you, um, welcome to parenting in 2020, first of all. Secondly, um, and welcome to the rest of us <laughs> and what we're all dealing with. But if you um, want to learn more and go deeper into this, check out my free webinar at FamilyTechGamePlan.com where we dive into these things as well as talk about the four secrets, the four solutions um, to really unpack a lot of these practical things as well as how to build heart-to-heart -heart connections with our kids. If you're, if you're thinking to yourself, well, I'd love to implement all those things, but how am I going to get my kids on board, my spouse on board even? Then you may want to consider jumping into the Family Tech Game Plan online course where we walk through this with you and your kids together so that they can, over the course of about 30 days or so, open their hearts and minds and understand why it's important to have safety online and to build healthy connections both with real life humans as well as with their technology, okay? Mom and dad, I know you can do it. I believe in you. Talk to you soon.